Welcome to our lectern line. In the summer of 1970, the Soviet Union launched Venera 7 on an historic mission to land on the surface of Venus. This would be the very first time ever that anyone had landed a spacecraft on another planet. We already had landed on the moon, but that's not nearly as difficult as getting a spacecraft to another planet and land there especially Venus. That was quite challenging because earlier missions already had given us the information that the pressure of the atmosphere and the temperature was actually quite high. So they had to build a spacecraft especially protected to make it through that atmosphere and so they had built it to withstand the pressure of 180 bars which is almost 180 times the atmospheric pressure on the Earth and temperatures as high as 580 degrees centigrade. Now in order to do that extra weight and extra protection had to be built around protecting the satellite, the lander, and so less weight would be available for the instrumentation to take data. But the whole idea was, could we actually land a spacecraft, a lander, onto the surface? So notice they had encapsulated the lander that looked like this. This is Venera 8, so they looked very similar to Venera 7, and it was encapsulated by a very strong steel spherical shell that then would be exploded away. The bolts had explosives in it, so when it came low enough where they could actually uh, get ready to deploy the parachute, they would then explode the bolts, the shield would then fall away, and then the spacecraft could then send, uh, descend to the bottom with the aid of a, of a parachute. So notice that it took them a little bit more than three months to get there, actually almost four months to actually begin the landing process. The lander was still connected to the bus and part of the reason why they did that was they wanted to continue cooling the instrumentation inside the lander through these pipes right here where cooled, cooled gas would then be pushed into the lander and back out trying to keep the lander at a temperature of about minus 8 degrees Celsius for as long as possible. So the bus was connected to the lander. When the turbulence in the atmosphere became too violent, they disconnected and the lander plunged into the surface. Now, not into the surface, into the atmosphere. And of course, the shape of this was built especially to kind of plunge into the atmosphere and use the friction of the atmosphere to slow down the spacecraft sufficiently where eventually the parachute could be deployed. So as soon as they felt that the, that the velocity was low enough, they would then explode the bolts, the shield would fall away, and now they were able to deploy the parachute. Initially, the parachute was deployed partially using what we call a reefer, so that way it was reefed only an area of 1.8 square meters. Then later on, when the reefing melted, it was actually built to melt, actually designed to melt. When it melted because of the heat of the atmosphere, then the rest of the chute would open and then, then uh, slow down even more. The area of the parachute would then increase to about 2.5 square meters. This happened about 13 minutes later. And finally, six minutes later, something unfortunate happened, like it does often when it comes to these initial space flights. The parachute began to fail, the descent began to increase, began to go faster and faster, and then finally, the whole parachute probably ripped off, it, com it failed completely, and the spacecraft was now in free fall. Because of the dense atmosphere of Venus, the free fall is obviously not as fast as free fall on the Earth, and it came down finally when it landed it was still moving at about 16.5 meters per second that's about 37 miles per hour or 60 kilometers per hour it was built so strong that it actually bounced and landed presumably on its side but survived the impact now initially they did not think it did because the transmission that they were supposed to receive well it seemed like there was nothing there but then several weeks later when the scientists went back and started very carefully analyzing the recording, they could, they could hear there was a very faint recording that went on for about 20 more minutes after the spacecraft landed on the surface. So it actually survived that violent landing. It probably landed on the side. The antenna was not oriented in the right direction to get the full magnitude of the transmission back to the Earth, but it was enough there to see that the spacecraft actually survived for about 20 minutes on the surface. So, what are some of the things that we discovered? The temperature that was measured was about 475 degrees centigrade, plus or minus 20 degrees centigrade, which is very close to the numbers that we believe it is now. The surface pressure was about 9 mega parsec, which is about 90 times the atmospheric pressure on the Earth, plus or minus 1.5. 
The deceleration of, upon impact was 0.2 seconds, so it was very violent impact. They believed that because of this very short period that it was the surface was not very soft. And then a total of 23 minutes of weak transmission was discovered, presumably because the antenna was on its side. So the mission was partially successful. It reached the surface for the first time. It wasn't quite the landing they were hoping for, but they were able to continue getting transmission from the surface for about 23 more minutes. Quite, quite an amazing thing. So what were some of the uh, measurements that they took? They had a pressure detector and a temperature detector, so that worked successfully. An accelerometer, so that we could measure the changes in the speed, and also from that, presume the density. We could then back, go back and calculate the density from the accelerometer. Once the parachute failed, we understood what the speed of the, of the lander was, and from that we can calculate the density of the atmosphere. And then we had a radar altimeter that could keep track of the altitude above the surface. The bus con also contained what we call a solar wind particle detector and a cosmic ray detector to see how that would differ from what we measured on the Earth as we go to the atmosphere of the Earth. Uh, quite amazing, quite a feat, even though there were several failures, it was still a, a, an amazing success in being able to land something, be able to build something as heavy and as strong as it was, be able to withstand the entry into the atmosphere and actually make it to the surface and actually work for a little bit after it reached the surface. It would be nice if it actually landed straight up and could take some measurements for a little bit longer, but then they send additional landing attempts later on that were even more successful than Venera 7, and so we continue to pile up the data and information about what is really happening on the surface of Venus. So that is it. A success, by all means, Venera 7, the first spacecraft that physically landed on another planet back in 1970.